freshman and the talented Talia Walton and then Amina Williams who is uh, so aggressive on the boards. And the head coach for the Huskies is Kevin McGuff in his second season. He's 39 and 24. All time, nine years as a head coach against Xavier. And assistant coach at Notre Dame prior to that, trying to turn things around for the Huskies on the other side for Colorado. They will go with the senior Chucky Jeffrey. She does everything for this team. And another guard is Brittany Wilson. Lexi Kressel, who had a shoulder injury but is back, as well as Arielle Robinson, the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, and then Rachel Hargis will finish things out. The head coach is Linda Lappy in her third season with the Buffaloes, a former player at Colorado, graduated in 2003, made it to the Elite Eight in 2002, as well as the Sweet 16 in 03, and she is trying to get this program back to that level of play as we get set for the tip. Colorado in the home whites, Crimson, black and gold, and Washington will have the purple uniforms. Crystal Walker alongside Mary Murphy, and we are ready to go here at Key Arena. The drive by Amina Williams is partially blocked. They'll stay out of bounds. It will stay with the Huskies. The Washington fans will certainly outnumber the Colorado fans, but if you follow Colorado basketball, men's or women's, you know they are the loudest fans in the land. They get into it, and this place erupted last night as Jasmine Davis was very aggressive, got her team back into it, and an injury down to the court, Brittany Wilson with the contact, and Davis. She is such a physical presence. Jasmine Davis initiates the contact, gets the call, will get to the free throw line. If you can get Brittany into some early foul trouble, that will go a long way to be helping this Washington team that does not have the depth that Colorado does at the guard spot or the post spot. Jasmine Davis, the sophomore out of San Jose, California, hits a free throw. She was perfect from the line last night, a 28-point outing in their win against Oregon. She was 9-9 from the free throw stride. Jessica Jeffrey tries to penetrate in. She is paired up against Mercedes Wetmore. Jeffrey so quick with the ball in her hands, off the screen. On the drive, physical play, and Talia Walton able to help out, but there's Robertson, offensive rebound, and Jasmine Davis sneaks in, gets the jump ball. It will stay with Colorado. We talked about this a lot last night, and every broadcast we've done in Washington game, they suffer on the rebounding numbers, and you see it there. They have got to make a concerted effort to keep it as close to even as possible. In the only meeting between these two teams, Colorado beat Washington by seven. Colorado was plus 14 on the boards. Not a lot of depth for Washington, as they have been hit with a variety of injuries. There's Christy Kingma knocks this one out, and just meeting up earlier in the season as it was all Colorado. February 24th, as Ariel Robinson knows, 16 points for the freshman. Gets it into Jeffrey. She draws a triple team, no good, and the rebound down to Walton. We talked throughout the season how Washington had the softest schedule in the conference. They only had to play Colorado and Utah once apiece, and Cal and Stanford once apiece. So three of the top four teams they really were able to avoid where other teams were playing them twice. It made a big, big difference. It's all about the scheduling. When you face teams, are you healthy or not? By Brittany Wilson rattles out. Talia Walton is up for the board, and instead they're going to call the foul against Arielle Robertson. That'll be her first. So active. Freshman of the year. A sensational second half of the conference season. Redshirted last year had the torn labrum in her left hip. And she has come back 100%. Team are trying to get some space instead. It's taken away by Lexi Kressel. It's a Colorado program that hangs their hat on defense. Screen by Hargis for Jeffrey. They find Robertson on the baseline, rattles in and out again. And just a little too much. But it will go the Huskies' way. Colorado, a 
team that averages 66 points per game. They hold their opponents to just 54. They are a strong defensive team. Jen Reese checks in for Rachel Hargis. Very talented 6'2 sophomore. Shot in and out, the rebound down to Brittany Wilson. She's gonna try to pick up the tempo. The drive by Alexa Kressel. Nobody steps in front of her, and she gets Colorado on the board. You mentioned that Lexi Kressel missed three games. She had a slight so shoulder separation, really known as a long-range shooter, so they're a little show-and-go. Pass deflected by Jeffrey Washington, gets it back. Wetmore, one-on-one, -on -one, has nowhere to go. Washington really needs to get Kingma going. Excellent lead by Kingma, the pass to Walton, and the finish by Talia. Christy Kingma did not make a field goal last night. 0 for 10 from the floor, did a lot of other things, but they need her to score tonight. Oh, you're right. She struggled with her shooting, but made up for it in so many other areas. But when you're playing games like this, Mary, you've got to have your go-to's doing what they do best. Back door. Talia Walton moving so beautifully without the basketball. The assist to the redshirt senior, Christy Kingma. She had four assists last night, and every one of them was big. Crossover move by Jasmine Davis, and nobody's there. The layup is good. Four points now. Last night, Washington dug themselves a massive crater of a hole going down 22 to Oregon. That's not the case tonight. They came out of the blocks ready to play. The composure by the Huskies after being down by so much as Robertson works her way in and the hustle play there by Chucky Jeffrey. I love Kevin McGuff in the post game asked about the game and he just said, I don't think we really understood that tip off was at 8.30. Yeah, you're right. And speaking of that, this late game for Colorado who might be on mountain time still. A shot way off the mark there. Well, they've waited a long time to play their first game. It has been a long day, a long couple of days for Colorado. Getting that first round by. Whitmore tries to find some space. Chucky Jeffrey all over and here she comes. Pull up jumper, rattles in. We've seen some great guard play so far in this tournament. Brittany Boyd, Lasia Clarendon, Leah Galdera. Chucky Jeffrey's going to put her mark on this tournament. The quickness that she has with the basketball and the decision to just pull up and take the jumper. And the outside shot there by Williams is no good. And the rebound goes to Kressel. Fast pace. Both of these teams willing to run if they can. And Wilson gets caught up. Pima with the interception. Two of the best freshmen in the league. Robertson and Walton. And Robertson gets the best of that one. Frustrated, the sophomore out of Paradise Valley, Arizona. Oh, a crossover move there by Jasmine Davis, but can't get the roll, and the rebound is down to Jen Reese. When I mentioned guard play, I think I should have mentioned Jasmine Davis. Don't forget about her. Long rebound, and Colorado all over the offensive boards here to start this first half. Won't go again for Kressel. It's out of bounds. And a timeout. Kevin McGuff talking things over. Iron women of this tournament. Last night, two players played 38 minutes, one played 39, and two other starters played 34. They're going to have to gut this thing out, get a rest when they can, and then just play on. That is just what Kevin McGuff's team has been dealt with this year. Not a lot of depth. They've had a few injuries here or there, and they just regroup. They try to play the cleanest ball that they can, and when they do, they can score in bunches. We've seen them shoot lights out behind the three-point arc. They don't. They're a team that goes and runs, and they've done it all season long. And they don't turn the ball over a whole lot and for them it's all about rebounds keep it even battle they have not been the biggest rebounding team however Mina Williams is one of the best in the conference 17 rebounds last night nine of them offensive 
Huskies try to make up for it with their three-point shooting. They're aggressive. They get to the free throw line. This is a very deep Colorado team. The feed inside by Chucky Jeffrey to Swan, and Swan can't get the layup. But Jim Reese kept hanging in there. The jump ball will go to Washington. I love the play of Jamie Swan, the 6'2 freshman out of Tucson. Doesn't get this one to go, but she comes in off the bench. A big physical presence. Does a great job just motoring on that baseline in the paint. Talk about the upside of this Colorado program. A year ago, they were undefeated in the preseason and a huge disappointment once they hit, co hit conference season. Just their second year in the conference coming over from the Big 12, making a big impression this year. They are Linda Lappy in her third season. I think really finally getting her recruits and getting her group together to Washington now. And Jasmine Davis with six points. You mentioned Swan. They've also brought in that player there, Ashley Wilson. He can't get the shot to fall. As well as Jasmine Spurloff, number 21. And checking in for the Huskies, it'll be Heather Corral. What more? We get a breather. When you describe Colorado, it's physical. Their guards are just ready to go, and you can play fast or you can play slow, but you better be ready for physicality. And Jen Reese, the inbound to her, and she is able to connect. A sophomore who played 25 games last year and then had the broken bone in her eye. And a shot there, a quick start from Heather Corral, who struggled last night, not so here early on. The little sister of Ashley Corral, the great point guard from USC, comes in and does what Ashley did so well for four years with the women of Troy, knocked down threes. Heather's had a lot of injuries and a backdoor cut and an assist from Chucky Jeffrey as she finds Jamie Swan once again. So the length of Jeffrey, we talked about how versatile her game is. She can score, but she is tremendous with the assist. And Jamie Swan, the freshman out of Tucson, Arizona. A couple of backdoor cuts now. That is so tough to defend and stop. The weave, Kingman, skip pass. Williams hangs on, draws some contact, and she will get to the free throw line. Chucky Jeffrey does everything for Colorado. The senior leads him in assists, finds Jamie Swan, the team. Group and playing just monster minutes and just finishing her career with a flourish. Uh, she definitely has, and she has been a warrior. Sat out last year because of the ACL, and she's been plagued with a variety of injuries throughout the career, but she is one of the toughest players. You mentioned earlier, too, she plays a lot of minutes. When you play 38 minutes a game and games go 40, you're playing a lot of minutes. <laughs> you definitely are. And Colorado still struggling with their shooting at 22%. That's not falling for the Buffaloes. Nina Williams one on one. And they're going to call her for the travel as she ran into Rachel Hargis, a bigger defender. interesting when these two teams played on February 24th it really was for fourth place it was a huge game when Colorado won that game by just seven points and just the slide for Washington sort of continued after that when they came home and lost to Cal and Stanford they also had some player suspensions they had to regroup so they hit a very difficult part of their season at a tough time and for Colorado they faced some of their toughest to start as California and Stanford face them on their home courts, but still, it's California and Stanford to start off your Pac-12 schedule. To say the least, this is a Colorado team that started conference play four and five. February 1st, you wake up, you're four and five, and from there, they ran off a nine-game winning streak. And a very tough schedule. And right now, out of sync as the pass from Brittany Wilson goes out of bounds when the Lappy says just to calm down and just get, get her team settled into what she knows they're capable of doing. Just Akima will come back in for the Huskies. 
And Linda Lappy is the picture of calmness on the bench. When you talk to her, she really understands having played for Seal Berry, the longtime great coach at CU, what the tradition in women's basketball is all about there. And she's trying to bring that back. And yeah, Seal Berry, the senior women's administrator now, she was the head coach until 2005 and took the last team to the NCAA tournament. And Jasmine Davis, with nine points now, has extended the lead to six. A little hook inside by Hargis is no good, and here come the Huskies. Davis, little ball fake. They have walked. Taking it right at Jasmine's four off. She may have gotten a piece of it, and here comes Brittany Wilson trying to take it all the way. Partially blocked in the follow by Ariel Robertson. Great team hustle and transition by Colorado. The miss, and there are two people there. Mercedes Wetmore. A little step around Weston. Cannot finish. As fast as Colorado wants to play, it won't match what Oregon did last night. So Washington really understands pace. That tempo was really something. Air ball by Robertson, but it's picked up on the other side by Jasmine Sporoff, the sophomore out of Round Rock, Texas. One of the big differences for Colorado this year is balance, inside to out, young to some of the older players, and it's that balance that has really carried the day after the tough start in conference. Mercedes Redmore takes it in, can't get the layup, follows her shot though, and then runs into the Twin Towers down low. But she will get fouled and get to the free throw line. Colorado really started to believe in the preseason when they won at home over number eight Louisville by 470 to 66. It was their first win over a ranked opponent since 2002 in the NCAA Sweet 16. Linda Lappin was part of that, but as a player, not as a coach. In the third season with Colorado, she was the head coach of Metro State, the Division II program for three seasons. These free throws, and whenever there's free throws, either way, for Washington, it's valuable. Not just because of the opportunities to score, but for the opportunity to rest. You are right, and the miss there, but the rebound brought down by Matilda Gilling, who's checked in for Washington. They kick it back to Keela, in and out, and there's Gilling again, keeping it alive. Cross court pass to Wetmore. And they're gonna call the over the back against Amina Williams. Outstanding box out. Force Amina Williams to go over your back. Don't give her the opportunity to get a clean look at the ball. Linda Lappi has to be happy about that. Amina Williams, one of the best on the offensive glass. We've seen some great ones. Shanae Agumake, Jennifer Brandon. I mean, some of the country's best offensive rebounders right here in the Pac-12 Conference. They just have that instinct and the timing of where they need to be when the shot goes up. Boot drive by Wilson is good. Brittany Wilson with the bucket. Great compliment to Chucky Jeffrey. So quick with the ball in her hands. And speaking of quick, Jaglin Davis no good, but the rebound comes down to Robinson. A foul as Brittany Wilson continues to be aggressive, continues to look in. We are tied up here in the first half. Substitutions down for Colorado. Chucky Jeffrey to come back in. Rachel Hargis also to get a rest along with Brittany Wilson. The luxury of the deep bench for Colorado and Linda Lappe. It may not reap results now at the end of this half, but in the middle of the second half and towards the end of the ball game, that's when she hopes she'll start seeing it. Definitely, especially with this type of pace. And Colorado on a 6-0 run. Little pick by Robertson, no good. And Gilling comes down with it. She thought Hargis was gonna be open when she initially looked, it went away, so she had to create a shot that just wasn't there. Christy Klingma uses the screen, gets it up space. First hoop of the game for 
Christy Kingma. And it came at just the right time as the Huskies get a two point lead here in the first half. The finals for the V Foundation Comeback Player of the Year in 2003. She's had such a wide ranging winning experience both in the classroom and on the floor, and now coaching this team and this program is destined for greatness. It really is. She's one of eight Division I coaches that's played for an AP ranked team and also coached an AP ranked team. And there's only two others that are still coaching Amanda Butler at Florida and Holly Wolick at Tennessee. And she is the youngest women's basketball coach at a BCS level school. Shot off the mark there by Anita Williams and Colorado still continuing to try to find the scoring as seven different players have scored for the Buffaloes. All of those have just two points though, Mary. They need more production from those players. A real focus by Washington when the shot goes up to get one, two people back and stop the transition of CU. So defense by Washington, a little bit of trapping, a lot of activity. Cut inside the lane by Jim Reese and the shot off the mark. The shot's just not falling this half so far for Colorado. It's a team that shoots at 40% from the field on average. And so here, back cut by Talia Walton, no good. Tries to follow her shot, and she gets knocked to the court. The challenge of guarding Washington, an unconventional team that doesn't have a pure post player. So your posts are out there chasing around on people like Amina Williams, who steps out and takes threes and then flies in for offensive rebounds. Talia Walton, who wants to take threes, put it on the floor, moves so well without the basketball. So it's very challenging for a more classically shaped team like CU to just find a defensive mindset against Washington. Very different styles. Corral finally able to get the inbound to Kimba. Walton out behind the arc. Had a good look. Could not get it. They will say it is off of Gilling. It will go to Colorado. You could just see Reese out there chasing Walton. She's thinking, you're not going to take it. Maybe you're going to dribble. I mean, you have to really set your priorities as a defender and really understand your own abilities. They've done a nice job against Walton so far. She averages 14 points per game. Just two points. She is 1 of 5 shooting. But you know, she could go 5 of 6. She definitely can. Shots just in and out again for Colorado. They'll say off the buffs. It will go to the Huskies. Right now, Colorado just has not reached a comfort level. They're throwing shots up. They're not really confident that they're going to go down. But this is a team that has been through the ringer. They understand what it means about pace, how to play a game, and just stay with it till things turn your way. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Jasmine Davis trying to create. She is by Brittany Wilson in the jump ball. It will go to Colorado. Brittany Wilson is the defensive stopper. Big, strong. Move your feet. Put your hands up. Get a piece of that ball. And you can see the bench react. They are about a defensive mindset. Brittany Wilson takes pride. She's always matched up against the top player on the other side. And she really takes pride in the D and shutting them down. Chuck Jeffrey off the dribble. Can't get the shot to fall. And Heather Corral will bring it up. The pass from Walton over to Gilling is good. And the layup to Matilda Gilling. You can see Jen Reese just chasing Walton down that entire possession. Really never had it under control. Colorado on a scoring drought. They have not scored in the last three minutes. Wilson. That was Chris that had great pace. Your feet are set. She lets it fly. You knew it was going down. A junior out of Long Beach, California. A little shove to Jasmine Davis and diving for 
the ball is Brittany Wilson, but the foul will go against her. Wilson comes off the screen, sets her feet. She knew when she came off the screen in three steps, I'm going to get that pass and I'm going to shoot it. And she let you know it was a three. Wilson will take a rest. Kai Weston checks in for the Buffaloes. And shows what more will wait to check in for the Huskies as Devin Davis goes to the line and gets the first. Washington with two players back beyond half court. Kingma, Corral. They're not worried about an offensive board, they're worried about playing deep. Substitution will come in. Jasmine Davis will get a breather. With the four minute media timeout coming, Kevin Lidgoff's trying to buy a couple extra minutes for Jasmine Davis. It's a pro style approach. Pressure coming out on Chucky Jeffrey. She's pulling with the midcourt line. With the bounce pass inside is good. Jamie Swan and one. It has been an electric connection between Jeffrey and Swan as she moves right and comes back left with the pass. Swan has been there three times. She's made two of those three shots. It has been a huge contribution as she goes to the line. The personal goes against Amina Williams. It is her second, and Jamie Swan gets the three-point play. And Mary, that play, that backdoor cut with a big like Jamie Swan is so difficult to defend and stop. Especially against the zone because the whole shift has come over. Nice space out there, but a nice finish by Talia Walton. Trying to get her game going. She has four points. Think about Washington. Their mind doesn't linger when they make a defensive mistake. They are automatic back on offense. The miss by Swan, no good. A second chance by Reese is in and out. You're right about the Huskies, and they proved that last night. When you're down 22 and it doesn't seem to phase you, and you come back and win a game, it really says something about the mindset of this team. They had been on a four-game losing streak. They were looking for redemption, and they found some. Tough play by Wetmore trying to go at Chucky Jeffrey, and Jeffrey, she's going to pick up the tempo. They say she was fouled. Kevin McCuff can't believe it. The Huskies hanging on to a lead here in the first half. In this season. They definitely have. And Lindsey Gottlieb voted by the media as the Pac-12 Coach of the Year. And Corey Close, I think Linda Lappy. There were a lot of options this year. Just an amazing season. A lot of depth. Four Pac-12 teams in the top 25. Kevin McGuff did a pretty solid job himself with limited players, limited options, a completely different style from a year ago. Chucky Jeffrey has arrived. Colorado needed that after the timeout. Huskies had taken the three-point lead, and Chucky Jeffrey takes it right back. Backdoor cut by Kingman. Wetmore loses it right into the hands of Jeffrey. The crossover, the pull up, is good. Chucky Jeffrey is taking this challenge of Jasmine Davis personally. Jasmine Davis already with 11 points. Chucky Jeffrey, one of the great defenders in the conference. This is a matchup that we want to keep our eyes on. The first lead for Colorado. And there's Davis, the air ball. And here comes Kai Weston. Jeffrey, another pull up. Second chance by Swan, no good, and hanging on was Ashley Wilson. They'll say it's a jump ball, and it will go to the Hussons, but March Madness has definitely begun. Two minutes here, left in the first half. Kula trying to get some space, able to find it, but the shot no good, and there's Matilda Gilling with the putback. The freshman out of Denmark. Anything she gives, minutes, points, rebounds, is a benefit. It's a big, big plus for Washington. Four points for Dilling. You are right. She's not played a lot this season. Kai Weston shot in and out. Aggressive board by Ashley Wilson and the putback. Did I mention how physical the guards are for Colorado? They will back down to no challenge. Ashley Wilson, the junior, and the sister to Brittany Wilson. Ashley is five minutes older than Brittany. 
yards wins. Davis a shot in and out. Ricky Jeffrey comes down with it. This tempo has kicked up a notch here to finish off the first half. Oh, Talia Walton. Fantastic freshman is right back at you. The move back in. Great move, but Walton. There's a couple players we're going to see for many years to come. The shot. Ashley Wilson on the weak side board. Ariel Robertson, the sister of Andre, who's a junior for the Colorado men's team. She's a spectacular athlete. She comes from a family of athletes. We get in to Robertson with the left hand, and she's able to roll it in. The brother's been sick, missed the big win the other night. They expect him to be back. Robertson gets a hoop on the other end, and Talia Walton. Spectacular freshman for the Huskies decides to take it. And there you see Ariel Robertson, and you mentioned her brother Andre, averaging almost 11 points a game. Look at the rebounds, almost 12 per game for the junior. Athletic family, mom Lisa played volleyball at New Mexico State. Dad, John, played basketball. There's just no excuses. <laughs> it really isn't. They're just one of five brother-sister tandems in Division I play. Oh, yeah, was the fourth of seven kids. I can relate being the fourth of nine. <laughs> so competitive, I'm sure, with everything, right? Exactly right. Sister Ashley played at Texas Tech, women's basketball. Amber at Texas Volleyball. Andre at CU playing basketball. Gotta love it. Free throw is good, and Colorado wants to call a timeout. They want to get something out of this possession before the half. And Linda Lappy's pointing to people and slapping them, saying, let's go. Boy, somebody is on the same page, and when it's your superstar, that's fantastic. A lot of players scoring for Colorado. No one in double figures as of yet. Chucky Jeffrey leads the way with seven. Team definitely has bought into Linda Lappy's system. The shot clock winding down. Jeffrey puts it up no good. Walton tries to bring it down instead. Ashley Wilson a second chance. The clock winding down. Will they get a shot off? Jeffrey heaves it up. And it is no good. Colorado will finish off the half, though, with a three-point lead. A couple opportunities, Mary. They just could not take advantage. But both teams play it. Chucky Jeffrey really started to light it up late in that half. We'll see if she can continue that here to start the second as Colorado gets the ball first. Two spectacular guards in Pac-12 women's basketball. The shot off the mark by Brittany Wilson. Jasmine Davis will bring it up for the Huskies. Colorado only gives up 53 points per game. It's all about defense, and you saw that there. Back at the other end, and that time, Ariel Robertson with the put in. They gave up 26 in the first half to Washington. This game has got to be a whole lot more high scoring for Washington. We want to send it over now to Anne Marie Anderson. She had a chance to talk to Coach Kevin McGuff and the Huskies. Krista, you mentioned Chucky Jeffrey heating up at the end of the first half. That was a point of focus, certainly, for Kevin McGuff, saying, look, we can't let Jeffrey get into the paint. We at least have to try to keep her on the outside, try to keep her from getting into that kind of a rhythm. Also, O'Boards, big focus for Washington. 15 to 6 is not going to be acceptable for Kevin McGuff and company. More defensive intensity required. Well, you're right, Emory. We'll keep our eyes peeled, see if the Huskies can make some adjustments. As Chucky Jeffrey puts an open look right there and will step into the lane. And that's exactly what, what Amory said Coach McGuff said he did not want to happen. And the timeout by Coach McGuff. Time to sit down. We need to talk about this and regroup. Not the kind of start with the four seed. And the UCLA men's team actually came and watched the women's team play earlier. So it was nice to see them in the building supporting as they will have a game against Washington coming up. Kevin McGuff, a minute, 10 seconds into the second half before a run by Colorado, and he says, we got to stop, and we must have another conversation, even though we just had a 15-minute conversation in the locker room. 
And Kevin McGuff does not want to see his team fall into the same situation that they did against Oregon. It was lucky for him that his team fell behind in the first half. They were able to dig their way out of it. That last personal goes against Brittany Wilson for Colorado, and it is her third. And the ball taken away. This time, Kai Weston on the break. Behind the back, little flip to Hustle. Hustle with the finish. Must have been watching Shanae Kumake in uh, the first game this evening with the behind the back. The defense of Colorado, the intensity, the smothering effect has just intensified in the second half. Flashy play by Colorado, and Talia Walton is shut down there by Ariel Robertson. This is a Colorado team that has won 24 games, their most since the 02-03 season when they finished 30 and three. Chucky Jeffrey in traffic. Somehow shot that one from her hip. Colorado not just trying to win this game, but make a statement. It has been a very tough season. The way their schedule is set up, and it's getting physical inside. The push ahead by Weston. Ooh, tip pass and Lexi Tress Kressel just running hard in a great read. Your teammate kind of veers to the middle, finds some space, always look for space on the floor. And the other one of those, if it goes, it's a great play. And out of that inbound, Talia Walton gets the three ball. Washington, I, I don't think there's a, a team in the country that, hey, we don't care if we're down, we know we can come back. Instead, the pass taken away by Heather Corral. Misty Kingma has been very quiet. Just one of four shooting for her. Muscles her way in and gets the foul to go her way. She will get to the free throw line. The challenge for Christy Kingma is that Oregon bring, excuse me, Colorado brings such physicality to the matchup. Every time she tries to come to the ball, puts the ball on the floor, she's feeling contact. They're big, they're strong, they're long, and it is a challenge. She has a body on her. As we look at the postseason numbers for this Washington team, an 84 RPI and their strength of schedule, you know, wait. Earlier, the RPI was 42. So certainly it has gone the wrong direction in a hurry. But they reached the 20 win mark for the second season in a row under Kevin McGuff. But when you watch this Washington team, you you could most definitely see them in the NCAA tournament. They maybe haven't deserved they, they're based on their play, they don't deserve it. But a high, high quality team. They really are. It's really impressive what Kevin McGuff has done. Again, not a lot of depth for this team at times. Just seven players suited up. But they are so accurate and they do so many things so well. Davis, one on one on the drive. And on. You are seeing two of the premier guards in the country go head to head. Chucky Jeffrey defending. Jasmine Davis taking it at her. It doesn't get any better than that. The crossover, inside out, the power move. It's special to beat special defense. Jasmine Davis, a sophomore out of San Jose, California, scored her 1,000th career point this season, the second fastest. Just one game behind Jamie Red. From down eight to down three. That's how you do it when you're a husky. Right back in this one. Shot off the mark there by Rachel Hargis. Heather Corral, walking pass, and it's intercepted by Chucky Jeffrey. The pull up, no good. Jeffrey follows the shot, keeps it alive. Rachel 
Hardis with the move down low, and Amina Williams will get called with the foul. It will be her third. Who's gonna win the Pac-12 Tournament Trophy? We'll find out. Hardis at the line. It's a very tough matchup for Amina Williams when they isolate her in the post. On Amina Williams gives up four to five inches, a lot of weight and length in there. Another area that CU will try to take advantage. Rachel Hargis, the junior out of Robinson, Texas, can't get the second free throw, but the foul by Jamie Swan as she hangs on and jump ball will be called. It will stay Colorado basketball. So extra effort and hustle gives the Buffs some second chances. Colorado doing an extraordinary job of taking care of the basketball. They average 15 turnovers per game. They have three. Jen Reese has checked back into the ball game, number 34 for the Buffaloes. And Hargis takes a breather as Chucky Jeffrey, and that's Tuck Mary, missed free throw, second opportunity, and she gets a three. She is doing it all. 14 points now for the senior. Play inside by Walton, can't get the roll, and the rebound as Ashley Wilson and Christy Kingma go after it, but they, they call the foul against Christy Kingma. Chucky Jeffrey, we've seen her on the drive here. The dish from Wilson parked out in the corner, lines it up, and nails it. Chucky, whose real name is Janisa, but never goes by it unless it's on her driver's license or her mom. Brings it up. That's it. I like calling her Chucky Jeffrey. I do too. Her grandfather's name was Charles, and they gave her the nickname Chucky early on, and it stuck. The great matchup continues with her and Jasmine Davis. Two of the most fun and electric guards in the Pac-12. There they are right there. Some hook side D though from Jamie Swan. The block. Oh, and tried to do just a little too much. They'll call the double dribble. It's called seeing something, not reacting. And when you think twice, it goes away. And Delappy loved the effort, I'm sure, before. The defense by Swan. Forget about it. Nice move on the baseline by Corral as she was able to find. Matilda Gilling. Talking about brothers in the Pac-12. Her brother Jonathan plays for ASU. 6'7", averages about seven rebounds a game, three assists. They call him the glue guy. Keeps that whole team together, a sophomore. Their go-to defender. Everybody needs a glue player. And big minutes for Matilda Gilling and some, some much needed extra scoring for this Huskies team. Checking into the game for Colorado is Megan Malcolm Peck, a senior for the Buffaloes. Gilling gets the free throw, the freshman out of Denmark. Five point lead for Colorado. The drive in the lane is good for Ashley Wilson. You focus on Chucky Jeffrey, the Wilsons will go wild on you as well. Ashley wears the right knee brace. She was out the first six games of the season and took her a little bit to kind of get back in as she had orthoscopic knee surgery. Jasmine Davis thought she might be able to take the shot instead. She finds an open teammate. Oh, behind the arc. We were sitting right in line with that. As soon as it left her hand, it was money. And a happy birthday to Heather Corral. That's a nice gift right there. Patience by Colorado and the shot clock pointing down the crossover by Jeffrey and the air ball. To me, this is the best game of the tournament so far. Just two teams going head to head, extremely talented. Superstars at the guard spot between Chucky Jeffrey and Jasmine Davis, and they're great complimentary players all around. A couple of the best freshmen with Walton and Robertson. 
Gilly nowhere to go as Krista Kingma tried to get the angle. Could not get it, but it comes right back to her. Corral tries it again to Leah Walton. Second effort. Nobody was guarding Jasmine Davis, and she decided to take the quick shot behind the three-point arc. The drive, find an open player, and the birthday girl from long range. Somewhere her sister, Ashley, fired up on that one. Her sister Ashley, you mentioned, played for USC and was second all time in back 12 and three-pointers made. Corral with six points. She did not score last night in their win against Oregon. Shot clock down to five. And the drive by Malcolm Peck is good. We saw some great passing in the Stanford game, just moving the basketball side to side. That was a great possession of moving the ball, finding the open player. I haven't seen much from the senior Malcolm Peck. She gets in and gets her first two, and a little dish out there to Billing is good. Malcolm Peck off the side of the backboard. It's a great job. Obviously, we have seen that tonight. Washington dead last. Usually they get four. Tonight, big time production. Gilling's done a terrific job. Heather Corral, the birthday girl off the bench as well. They've got 14. Kevin McGuff's bench. Giving him the offense, 14 points. Gilling, six points in just 12 minutes of play. That's great production. I'll take those numbers any day. Shot clock is winding down. Walton partially blocked, and Colorado will get it. On the drive, it's rejected. Lexi Kressel gets it swatted away. Defense in transition. Find the basketball. That was the only shot Jasmine Davis had. You show the ball, she shows you the block. Jordan Reese gets the double two. Yeah, hard double. And she goes to the court. No foul call. Jasmine Davis ends up with it. Feeling, oh, they miss her. The pass is deflected by Brittany Wilson. Gilling finds herself trapped down low, nowhere to go. And Kevin McGuff able to get a timeout. It's one of the tantalizing things about basketball. If you're a passer, you see someone open. And Maria Walton has been a little bit of a slow start. Christy Kingma, who averages double figures, has struggled now the last couple of games. But she gets a lot of focus. They know what she's capable of when teams face her. Kingma draws the contact and will get herself some free throws. Well, you're Christy Kingma, you're T Talia Walton, and you see a myriad of matchups. 11 players have been on the court for Colorado. They are shuttling people in and out. They've got a lot of fresh bodies. They've got fresh legs. They haven't played yet in this tournament. And if you're Kingma and Davis and Walton, you played monster minutes last night. And you just have to wonder if the team going to start hitting in. Checking back in is Amina Williams. She has three personal fouls, so she's had to watch a big chunk of this second half. Free throw is good for Kingma. She had to sit for an extended period, and you're only down two. That's a big positive. A very big positive. Seven points now for Kingma, and a scramble for the ball. Robertson able to get it to Kressel. Wilson picks up the dribble. Jim Reese comes around, uses the screen, gets the shot. Potent offensive player off the bench. Gives him nine points, five rebounds, 20 minutes a game. That's solid. Davis' shot is short, and the rebound goes to Pressler. Side and the backboard cut there by Kessel almost got it to her. Jen Reese, the 6'2 sophomore out of Clackamas, Oregon. 
moving well without the ball, gets right into her motion off that down screen. Added to her total, six points now for Jen Reese. A couple of crossovers by Jacqueline Davis, nowhere to go. Sends it back out to the perimeter. One on one. Tried to use the glass, couldn't get the angle. Brittany Wilson, 100 miles an hour, and Talia Walton was waiting for her. Nick Wilson's appreciating the opportunity to come back down, slow it down, and be a little more effective. Breeze pops out, can't get it. And Jasmine Davis will bring it up. Challenge for Washington. The defense will not go away. It's smothering to start. It's going to be smothering to finish. And a scary play there as Brittany Wilson was trying to shut down Jasmine Davis. And she hit the back of her head. Saw the same thing with Bonnie Samuelson for Stanford. And Brittany Wilson is up. She was called with the personal. And that is her fourth. And she's in some pain. Linda Lappy. Talking to our official Melissa Barlow, thinking that Brittany had position. And the look from Linda Lappy with the conversation with the official, that made no sense to me. That's what she just said. Uh, I, I'm just not sure what you're, what you're saying to me, ref, but I don't agree. And Brittany Wilson in some pain. Her sister, Ashley, checks back in. Amina Williams, nice drive, but cannot hit. Becky Jeffrey had been on the bench. She is inserted back into the lineup. Jeffrey can't get it, but it's tipped back out to Kai Weston. Another second opportunity. The inability to secure and have it be a one and done. Not a lot of so physical on the boards. And it's getting physical down low away from the basketball. And the foul is going to go against Amina Williams, and that is her fourth. So she will check out, and Matilda Gilling will come back in. Didn't get a whole lot of playing time before number four got tagged. Kai Weston with the inbound. Finds Ashley Wilson. For the amount of minutes that Amina Williams plays, she has not fouled out this season. A couple of games she's had four, but really she's been able to play through a whole lot of games without any trouble at all. Ashley Wilson on the drive gets it taken away. Washington needing some scoring. They've had just one made field goal in the last six minutes. Corral. Finds Gilling back to her. And the defense with the foul on Gilling. Offense is turning into a complete grind for Washington. Beautiful shot here and buys. So with seven and a half minutes to go in this game, Colorado is up six, but they have 17 fouls. If you're Washington, spread the floor, get in attack mode, get yourself to the free throw line. We just saw Brittany Wilson for Colorado as she had a tough collision earlier, hit her head on the court and had to come out. On the other side, Washington has only three team fouls, so they can be aggressive, they can trap, they can be high risk, as long as they don't give up layups on there and trying to create. Go ahead and go for steals. If you foul, it doesn't hurt you. Gillen gets one of two. The lead now for Colorado is five. The drive by Chucky Jeffries off the mark, but the foul by Jamie Swan is good. The impact of the offensive rebounds totally wearing out Washington. Seven points now for the freshman Jamie Swan. 
You're right, Mary Washington, not a great rebounding team, so they've had to make up for it with three-point shooting with free throws, and that helps out right there. The three by Jasmine Davis. She has 17. That's from Mercer Island. <laughs> Ice cream for Weston. Rachel Hardis has come back in for Colorado, number 40, and she loses it. And then it goes right back to Kai Weston. The feet inside, Swan with the finish. Swan has just been money on that left side. Great hands, always ready. Kevin McGuff says we need to regroup. Jamie Swan with... And she said, told her team to be uncommon. They really bought into her defensive scheme as well. She said she knows that's always something they can control. Even if the shots are off, you can control defense and the energy. And the team has bought in as Christy Kingma has come to life. Williams with four personal fouls, Garden Swan. Kai Weston on the drive, little folder, folder is good. The sense of desperation for Washington. If they want to go to the NCAA tournament, this is a must win. Very good point. That was the first score for Weston. Jasmine Davis gets her shot blocked, and it comes back down to Ashley Wilson, but the takeaway, Mercedes Wetmore back in the game. Linda Lappin won it in over and back. Corner shot by Kingman, no good. Amina Williams doing what she does best, keeping it alive. Wetmore, and a block by Swan. Opportunities for the Huskies as this clock continues to wind down. We are under five minutes here in the second half. Cut into the lane by Ashton Wilson, and the layup is good. So the question at the beginning of the game, the depth of the bench of Colorado, how many subs they were able to put on the floor, the freshness, would it have an impact? With four and a half to go, the fresher team most definitely looks like it is Colorado. Davis and Jeffries, the matchup, the block shot by Chucky that time. Chucky Jeffrey this year as a senior playing within herself, so much more relaxed. And a beautiful pass, Hargis to Wilson for two. 15 on the shot clock, the inbound goes to Talia Walton. And this blows and the foul will go against Colorado. A good sign for the Buffaloes. Checking back in as junior guard Brittany Wilson. She fell earlier, hit her head on the court. Nice to see her back on the court. Every opportunity to score, huge, and got to deliver for Washington. Tamir Walton gets the first free throw. It's her ninth point of the game. A quiet night for Talia Walton. And she gets them both. Double figures now for the freshman. She averages 14 points per game. But she can't score if you can't get open. That is right. The defense has been smothering. Six-point lead for Colorado. The shot by Brittany Wilson off the mark, but she got clocked behind the arc. It has been a physical outing tonight for Brittany Wilson. And Linda Lappi gets on the floor, picks her member of her team up and says, you get to the foul line and let's go, let's finish this. The shot, Wetmore with the fly out. Not much contact, but enough. First free throw is good for Brittany Wilson. Mercedes Wetmore, they were trying to have her sub out. She will have to wait. Second free throw, in and out. And now Heather Corral will come back in for Mercedes Wetmore. Oh, yeah. 
freshness. Every sub comes in, ready to go, well rested. So Brittany Wilson gets two of three from the line. And lead up to eight. Jasmine Davis needs to bring some magic. Great call. Jasmine Davis was trying to free herself from Chucky Jeffrey. Instead, Jeffrey picks up the second personal. We've got a close one here. We'll see how it finishes up from Key Arena right after this. This close one here will have to face the number one seed, Stanford. And as we were heading to that timeout, Christy came up getting everybody together and saying, let's go, we've got this in us. Davis cannot hit the free throw. Colorado, 11 different players have scored, and in the second half, the points in the paint dominated by the Bucks, 18 to 6. The outside shot by Jeffrey, no good, but working hard down low was Jamie Swan, keeping it alive as the Buffaloes will get it back. And it's this balance that has been brought to this team by players like Swan this year that has made them a nationally ranked program. Contested shot there for Chucky Jeffrey, and the Huskies will look to push. Davis picks up the dribble. Can't turn the corner like she did in the first half. Walton in the back door, cut by Corral. Somehow flicks it back to Talia Walton. And there's Amina Williams keeping it alive. Short shots mean fatigue. Kingma kicks it over to Williams, and she can't hit. Ty Weston will push it up. The mind is willing for Washington. The body is just starting to give out. What a game they had just last night against Oregon. They were down by 22. They cut it down to 11 at halftime. But it was a run and gun kind of outing, and they're having a tough time slowing down Jamie Swan down low. She's going to be a star. She is really good. 47% shooter, comes off the bench. What a lift. Jen Reese, Jamie Swan come off the bench. He's starting for a lot of programs. This is such a deep Colorado roster. I think Jamie Swan gets lost in the mix at times. She gets lost. Lexi Kressel comes back in. So for Brittany Wilson, she finishes up seven points, three rebounds, and free throw is good for Amina Williams. for Washington. They need stops, one and duns. They got to get in transition. They need threes. They got to score in a hurry. That was just the second point for Amina Williams, Mary. A tough night for her. Swan in the back of that zone. Working inside to Robertson. Takes it up against Walton. No good. Swan waiting on the other side with the putback. She's been fantastic. 13 points for Jamie Swan. Blocked, shot. We'll go to Colorado and for Kai Weston. She wants to pull up and let the clock wind down with a 10 point lead. And the last time Jamie Swan had double figures against Stanford on the 27th when she was seven and nine from the floor and had 14 points. Pass off the mark there. Jasmine Davis comes up with it, and she's going to have to push. They need some scoring. A quick shot by is good. Three ball. They got it to seven. Timeout. Coming up next. Pass, Pac-12 post-game report as it's getting really physical inside. Turnover, ball possession to Washington. Inbound to Williams. 
Pitch it back out to Walton. Her shot from the top is good. Never say die, Huskies. 15 foul. Coach McGuff working the gum. Corral. Amina says there is nothing here. Finds Talia Walton and says, I'm always comfortable shooting the three ball. Good read by Talia Walton as the D left her and she turns squared up, got the shot and the inbound pass, wide open, Chucky Jeffrey. Corral can't get there and the finish by the senior. Everybody face guarding, it's time for the home run play. Take some guts to throw it. Chucky Jeffrey looked like a center fielder there and delivered the layup. Six point game, Jasmine Davis kicks it back out, Walton, the three, no good. Swan tries to bring down the rebound and she is swarmed. The personal goes against Christy Kingma. And that is her third. She was telling her teammates at this point, you have to foul. Base guard press once again. Going deep, Chucky Jeffrey once again. Jasmine Davis takes it away. Oh, throws it away. <laughs> it's safe. <laughs> to Leah Walton. They get it out to Corral. No good. Chucky Jeffrey brings it down and she gets fouled. What a sequence in this ballgame. Both coaches up, talking to the officials. The officials have just turned their hearing aids off and are just going to focus on the ball game. Our officials tonight, Melissa Barlow, Bob Schofield, and Chuck Gonzalez. Chuck and Jeffrey will get some free throws. It's the first big ones. Eight-point lead for Colorado. Chucky Jeffrey has been thoroughly in charge of this ball game for CU from start to finish. And gets another. She got lit up early by Jasmine Davis, and since that point in time has really shut her down. She leads this team in so many different categories. Walton takes it in, gets the foul call. It will go against Robertson. Colorado did such a great job of just building a wall in that paint and every time Washington tried to put it on the floor and turn the corner just kept pushing them further and further out. Nope, you're not turning the corner on me. And the Lappy said, we will focus on D and the team really bought in. And they played very well, such a physical game against the Huskies. Christy Kingma could be her last ball game. What a career. Walton can't hit it. Kingma tries to keep it alive. It'll be off her, and it will go to the Buffaloes as Jen Reese checks back in. Colorado on a nine-game winning streak. Came into this game with such confidence. Their highest national ranking in nine years, trying to make a statement and move on. They get it back to Chucky Jeffrey, and she is fouled. This one will go against Heather Corral. Last year when you watch Chucky Jeffrey, it's like she tried to play 40 minutes every time she had the ball in her hands, trying to make something happen, the intensity. This year, so much more relaxed. She's got help inside and outside. The Wilsons helped so much, and they have just done a tremendous job complimenting each other this year. She's really taken the pressure off of herself because she has depth. She has others that she can go to. Uh, it's got to be a great feeling, especially in her senior season. A team after the first month of conference play, four and five. We said we didn't look at the standings. We didn't look at anything. We just focused on ourselves every single day. What do we need to do to get better? It's interesting when Coach Linda Lappy talked about how she would not put the standings up. She really didn't want to know. She said it was difficult because she wanted to know for herself, but she said she wanted them to focus on each game as it came. 
Well, when you're sitting at four and five and you look at your upcoming schedule and you think, well, we basically have to win out. I mean, their goal coming in was a top four finish. Jamie Swan, five points in the first half. She has 10 points here in the second half for 15 for the freshman. Kingman down to Williams, off the mark, and that will do it.